getting confused about standard deviation. Is it a risk measure or a measure of dispersion? This is a great topic and one that many find confusing. First, standard deviation is a measure that is based on the assumption that a distribution is normal. Think of the bell-shaped curve. Back to your question, standard deviation can be both a measure of risk as well as a measure of dispersion. How can that be? Aren't dispersion and risk two different things? Actually, yes, they are. Dispersion deals with how spread out to manager's returns are. For example, if there are 10 clients, all being managed the same way, did the clients all get roughly the same return over a certain period, or were they very different? Prospective clients are interested in knowing how consistent the manager has been. Why is that important? Well, let's say that last year the manager's average return was 8%. However, if the clients experienced very wide differences, then the reported return has little value. However, if the manager tends to be consistent, then the prospect can have greater confidence that he or she will have experiences similar to others being managed this way. Okay. That makes sense, but how can standard deviation also be a risk measure? When we use standard deviation to look at returns across a time period, for example the past 36 months, we use standard deviation to see how volatile the returns have been. Is volatility a measure of risk? Good question. Some people don't see it as a definition of risk. Rather, many see potential loss as a better measure of risk. What about the potential for not meeting an objective? That's what I think of when I speak about risk. Yep, that's also a way some see as a risk definition. But even when people don't see volatility as risk, they still want to know how volatile their returns have been. And standard deviation is a way to do just that. High volatility is thought of as being more risky than low volatility. Well, what if the market is volatile? Couldn't that contribute to a portfolio's volatility? Absolutely. That's why when reviewing the volatility of your portfolio, you should compare it to the volatility of the appropriate benchmark. Okay, I'll buy that. But you said that standard deviation is based on the assumption of a normal distribution. Returns aren't normally distributed. How good a measure is this? Interesting point. This is one of the criticisms that is often aired by individuals who don't see standard deviation as a valid risk measure. Its value no doubt suffers a bit because of this shortcoming. Nevertheless, it's still a commonly used risk measure. How common? Very. Research by the Spalding Group shows that it is the number one risk measure. Number one? How can that be? Well, Standard deviation has been used as a risk measure since the 1950s and has been well thought of for a long time, even with its shortcomings, because it's fairly intuitive many firms and individuals like it. The GIPS standards now require standard deviation, right? Yes, that's correct. Effective January 2011 compliant firms must provide a 36-month annualized standard deviation, for both the composite and the benchmark. Well thank you. This is much clearer. You're welcome. I'm glad I could help.